Hi, I'm Cassie, host of the Curiosity Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the subscribe button to follow us and receive new episodes each week. If you really enjoy the podcast and you're feeling generous, please hit the donate button. Today's guest drives a 1955 Chevy 210 handyman station wagon, and he loves it. In fact, he says every time he gets out of it, he has to turn around and admire it. Please welcome Jeff Fisted to the podcast. Well, let's jump into Good Guys. Tell us a little bit about what the Good Guys car show is all about. And then I'd also love to know how you got connected with them. Well, so I, I believe it's the largest, um, like not car club, but car association, uh, at least in America, if not the world. I think there's over 73,000 members, uh, something like that. I'm, I got affiliated with them. Uh, I've got an old Chevy and I drive it. And uh, Prestone years ago was having, I think, their 90th anniversary. So they were doing a road trip from Phoenix to uh, the LA Auto Show. And I lived in LA at the time and I got invited along or my car got invited along. And uh, I always show up to places early and we showed up. The, the starting point was uh, Westworld in Scottsdale, okay. uh, Arizona, outside of Phoenix. So I show up early in the morning and there's already this bright yellow Camaro there. And it's like, geez, where's, you know, where's the, the trailer that this thing came out of? Oh, I just drove this in from Texas. This is like, oh, you're so full of crap. Come on. And it turned out uh, the guy, it was Ed Capen. And he was, uh, I'm not sure if he's director of operations or vice president. He's one of the, the uppity ups there at, at Good Guys. And I had never met him before. So we just start talking. We're car guys. We start talking. Right. Uh, and it's, yeah. So it was basically he and I driving. Uh, if, if, if we had a great time. Uh, that car is super fast. It's got a Lingenfelter engine in it, a whole bunch of horsepower. And back then my car was just, it, it had a small block with a 700 R4, but I drove it a lot. And that yeah. was the first keeping up with that Camaro uh, gave me a whole bunch of confidence in my car. And it was, it was super fun following Ed uh, and knowing I could kind of keep up with it. Uh, so, and Ed didn't know what I did. And I was the host of the hot rod power and the host of the hot rod power tour and a whole bunch of other stuff. And as it turns out, Ed, uh, and the good guys needed an autocross announcer. Uh, so they brought me on and I've been with them for, I'm not sure how many years, but I usually do from, uh, from the Texas show, uh, West and they, they do 21 shows across the country. The majority have autocross. Uh, mm -hmm. they're usually they're car shows, uh, right. not an auto show like the, the uh, LA Auto Show or Detroit, North American International, but car shows with hot rods and uh, super bitchin', pretty, beautiful hot rods, cars. Uh, uh -huh. And the autocross is a whole like separate entity from the car show uh, because a lot of the car show people will drive them there or trailer them there. They drive them, don't get me wrong. And, and I, I, I appreciate and love that. But um, come out to the autocross. Oh no, I don't want to hurt my car. And that's the thing is that you don't have to hurt your car. If your car can go straight, go, if it can stop and go and turn left and right, you can do the autocross. <laughs> it's that simple. And in, in order to qualify for the street, mean, street machine of the year uh, for the good guys, the car has to make three autocross passes. And when, and I love that. I wish all of the cars had to make three passes. Uh, Cause it's like at, at Pebble beach, they have a, a, a drive. And if the car completes the drive and there's a tie between two cars, the one that did the drive will win versus a car that didn't. Uh -huh. So it's like, it's anyways, the, the autocross is um, if you like cars, you know, like seeing them live and eat and smelling them and hearing them. I got last year in, or a couple of years ago in Loveland, Colorado, my pop came out to one of the shows. Yeah. And two of my, my, and I, they're, they're not there. I, I have a car family now. Um, and it's wonderful. So two of my friends, uh, Dick and Karen Etchison, they live in Cortez, Colorado, and they have a 1965 Chevelle. It's four doors, but they've got the new direct injected Chevy LT1 engine and a, a six speed Tremec transmission. Yeah. So my pop is at the show. My little, my brother, my brother, Scott, who oh, I, I love chickened out my brother's friends chickened out everyone chickened out but my pop karen etchison strapped him into the passenger seat of, of this chevelle and dick took him on this this ride around the track it was so anyways it was uh 
it's super awesome fun and it's a it's like i said it's a it's a good guy's car family yeah and that's when i was talking with lance that's what he said too he said it's like a family and everyone is supportive and wants everyone to uh, get better be better drivers um, they don't know. want to win by default or win by having uh, somebody break down uh, right. i remember chris jacobs at that loveland show busted a power something broke on the car and during lunch three of them he and two of his competitors drove to AutoZone or wherever it was to the parts store picked up the part fixed it in the parking lot and got him back out and he won he won the event yeah see so I, it's I, like it, yeah i love that and that, that that is one thing you feel when you're there too because i was just here at the um arizona one and did a ride yeah. along with lance and that is so much fun and i love that you guys the good guys group does that they let you sign a waiver you can go with the driver and i think a lot of you drivers, got the wristband yeah you have to have your wristband that's right <laughs> that's right and it but it's really cool that they do that and they're not like crazy racing it's just fast in a i call it a safe environment honestly it is yeah it's a parking lot with cones i mean <laughs> it's really safe uh you're not racing anybody but yourself and the clock Right. Um, there's no other cars out on the track. It's yeah, it's super fun. And uh, which day were you there? Uh, we were there on the first day. Is that Thursday? Friday. 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 Okay. So Saturday is Friday's kind of a practice day. Uh, Saturday we, it, we is the big shootout, and then Sunday's the All American shootout. So on Saturday, uh, there's four four car shootouts. Is the new format. Uh, and in the oh, gee, I forget the class. It had to have been Pro X, but uh, ninety way over 90% of the cars are V8s. Okay. Very few of them are six or fours. And Mike Alstrom drives, a, I think it's a 65. It's not, that's his license plate is not a Manx. So it's not a Myers Manx dune buggy, but it's a dune buggy. It's got a Volkswagen engine. Uh, it's a super bitchin' little dune buggy with the, yeah. the VW wide pipe wheels. It's got a big wing on the back. It's zippity zip. It is super cool. He, guess who he got paired up with? Who? Robbie Unser. Oh, yeah, I um, saw him driving. It, well, Robbie's pot, Bobby just passed. Um, so so oh. Robbie, the, the king of the mountain, nine-time Pikes Peak Hill Climb champion. He qualified for the Indy 500. He's yeah. he's an Unser. And Mike comes up to me on Sunday. He's like, you know, Jeff, I just, uh, yeah. And Mike spun it at the end. He took himself out. But oh. he's like, you know, I had no, no, what do you mean you had? Who cares about your chances? You went out there, you had fun. And forget about having fun now. How many of your friends can tell the story the next time you're at the bar? So, you know, a couple of Saturdays ago, I was racing Robbie Unser. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure you were. It's true. He was ra he ra he was up against Robbie Unser side or in a in a in a in a runoff. So, anyways, I, that's pretty awesome. I do think that's awesome. And how great! What a great way to look at it. It doesn't matter if you won or lost. Like you were racing against Robbie Unser. Yes. Yeah. Is it Robbie or and Bob? you have well, Bobby just passed. That's okay. Uncle Bobby. And then Robbie is his son. And then little Al, Al Unser Jr. comes out as well. They both race for Speedway Motors. Uh, and Al is Robbie's cousin, or Ro Al and Robbie are cousins. Okay. So they're super nice. They're super approachable. And uh, if you, if you, next time you come out, you, uh, I don't know about the mask thing and the COVID thing, but the way it used to work, if you want, if, if you sign the waiver, and you're nice to them and you can ask them for, they can always say no, but I've never known anybody to say no. If you're talking to them about their art car, can I have a ride? Heck yeah, hop on in. So sign the waiver, get the helmet. And it is, I've been with both Robbie and Al and it have that little Speedway Nova. Oh, it's yeah. an e-ticket ride. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Those guys can drive. I wish I had gone over and, uh, had a chat with him, but they look like they had a lot going on. So I was like, oh, I don't think I want to go over there, but I wish I would have. Don't Next worry. time. Yeah. yeah. Next time. Yeah. Go up and say hi. And uh, uh, another competitor that wasn't out in Scottsdale. Um, but uh, when, when I first started in Texas, they have to write down on their tech sheet, you know, the car, the name, the car, the engine, the tires, all this kind of stuff. And if you, you know, what a Shelby Cobra is. Oh, heck yeah. I've been in one. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So there, there's exponentially more uh, kit cars or fake Shelby Cobras out there than there ever were real Shelby Cobras. And all these, there's like six of them out in Texas. 
1965 Shelby Coburn. It's like this, it's, first of all, they didn't have a 427 in 65. So it's not a, unless it's a magic car. And anyways, <laughs> I just ripped them apart of the microphone. It's like, I, you don't, it's not a Shelby. So don't, please don't say it's a Shelby. And then uh, Sue, Miss Pitts and, uh, and John Borcher, the king of the road for the, the guy who puts on the, all the autocross, they both told me separately, you know, uh, Jeff, there, there, there's actually a guy who brings out a Cobra. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Right. Like that, because that's going to happen. My next show was Scottsdale, and I showed up early, and the car, the only person who was there before me was down in the corner, and it's this silver Cobra, uh -huh. Bruce Camburn in CSX 3170, the only guy that he, he, he bought it brand new from Carol Shelby, and, and he raced it SCCA for years, and he put it in hibernation, and now it's got a D-stroke 440, and this guy, Scott Frazier, he beats on this car. And to put it in perspective, they've, they've won the, the, the duel in the desert three times, and he beat Robbie Unser last year by, I'm not sure if it was a second, um, but the car is legit fast. Every time it's being driven, history is being made. It's, it's incredible to watch. Um, so you get to see a real deal Shelby Cobra getting, uh, getting driven like it should be driven, living. It's, it's awesome. Yes, and I think that's kind of the, the fun thing about it, too, is these cars, a lot of these are muscle cars that we're talking about at the at the autocross. They're being driven kind of the way they're meant to be driven in, in an environment where they get to, like, put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, but the muscle cars were never meant to go left and right. They were meant to go in a straight line. <laughs> So these cars have got suspension. They, a lot of them are running 335s, 350s, super wide tires at all four corners. Uh, it's amazing. And then on uh, at the good guys on Sunday, it's all American Sunday. Okay. So on uh, Friday and Saturday, it's 1987 and older. But on Sunday, bring out the new stuff. So it's like you get the Hellcats that come out. You get the Corvette Z06s, Corvette Z06s, Camaros, Mustangs, Char all the new heavy metal comes out and it's so cool. Oh, okay. So I think the next time I go to this, I'm going to go for all, is it four days or three days? Three, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday usually, yeah. And then, uh, and I don't want to give anything away, but it's already happened. Uh, I have a video on YouTube that you can check out. The, the winner of All-American Sunday, take, take a guess at what kind of car it was. Oh my gosh, it's probably something random. <laughs> I don't know. You'll, a Tesla. Oh, Lance was talking about that. Yeah. I'm not making this up. A Tesla, the, the guy can drive. I'm not just saying it's the car. It's yeah. not, the, the guy's a hell of a driver, but a, a Tesla. And the thing is silent death. Oh my gosh. It just goes, yeah. I have heard the Teslas have quite a bit of power. They didn't in the beginning, but now they really, they've stepped up that game and that Tesla's an awesome vehicle. Well, it's like an internal combustion engine has, you have to get revs in order for it to move. But an electric motor, you've got 100% torque right right off the line. It's either on or off. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, That's yeah, so cool. They motivate. Wow. Who knew Tesla? Well, let's talk about your car a little bit because you have a pretty cool car and you take it everywhere, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I love the damn thing, and it's a uh, there's a one of those a quote somewhere that if uh, after you park your car, if you don't turn around as you walk away and look at it, you got the wrong car, and it's like it's. Yeah, I love the damn thing. It's like I even uh, this is what I had to go get earlier is uh, yeah. So yeah. I did a a book on it and uh, yeah, pictures of. I love your pictures. Yeah. I was on your website. That car, it's just a beautiful car, and Thanks. it's it's like an every man's car. Remind you of what well, takes me back to being a kid, I guess. Man, a little it's a little further back than I know, but it's just. It's just, um, it's fun to look at. And I love it's, it's an old, it's a 55 station wagon. Yeah, uh, everybody thinks it's a nomad. It's not a nomad. Oh. Uh, there's a, a, yeah, there's a few differences, but it's not a nomad. So yeah. And I drive it everywhere. Yeah. You've taken some great photos and it's a fantastic book. I, I would say. Definitely. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Are you on your second book with the car? I've got enough for. I'm building two more right now. And then I've got photos just from, uh, I picked it up two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, at, when I left Scottsdale last year in November, uh, a lady ran into me. And so I had uh, some, yeah, fender bender, literal fender bender. It was very sad, mm -hmm. uh, but it was okay. I drove it back to LA and I'd already had uh, plans for a new vintage air 
uh, Gen 4 unit and a Dakota Digital RTX gauges for the car. And then uh, Dakota Digital has this thing, it's a, I think it's a DCC 4000 unit. And the gauges plug into the controller, the controller plugs into the vintage air and talks to the vintage air. So like on my brother's Suburban or my dad's car where it says if you wanted it at 68 uh, and it come out the vent or if you wanted it at 82 or you turn it like that, that's what that little controller does. So in a 65 year old car, uh, it's got modern air conditioning, just like a new Suburban or the new Camaro. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of cool, but yeah, so got it fixed. And then, um, yeah, uh, had drove it just from LA to Scottsdale and then Scottsdale back to LA for the good guys. And then, uh, I thought I got the Dakota digital, uh, the GPS speedometer set up. So that was being accurate and everything with the odometer. Uh, it's a pretty cool system. Uh, and from there, I went to the LS Fest West in Vegas and then uh, saw all my car buddies there. And after that, I went to the Valley of Fire State Park, uh, which is north of Vegas, drove through there uh, and then up to St. George, Utah to visit Speed Tech Performance. Uh, I'm going to try to put one of their chassis under the car at some point. And then from St. George, I went to Zion National Park oh, wow. uh, and the new Zion Scenic Byway. And then up to Bryce Canyon National Park and Utah Scenic Byway 12, which is an all-American road. Very cool. It's a spectacular road. Uh, Bryce Canyon National Park uh, and then Escalante Staircase Monument. Um, what's the other? Oh, the Capitol Reef National Park. And I drove all the way to the end this time. Last time I went there, I stopped when, uh, when the pavement ended. And yeah. I think there's three or four more miles, which... Like, I don't I bought him that a few times but it's like and people <laughs> thought I was nuts and I'm it's I got all the way back almost to the register to where the road ends where that's oh. you're surrounded by where the, the Mormon pioneers came through wow. um it's in this in my old car and then from there um up to Hanksville Hanksville the Green River had a burger raised burgers or raised tavern in Green <laughs> River fantastic and then uh spent the night in Fruta Oh, oh, yeah, I drove uh, from Green River. There's an old section of Highway 50 and Highway 6 that's not maintained anymore. It's just wow. almost like a dirt. It, it was amazing. Uh, and, uh, and then Colorado National Monument, Rimrock Road. And then I had, my, had an accident with a flying log. And then I had a blowout oh. on uh, Floyd Hill. And uh, I just got my new tires yesterday. And uh, wow. after my interview with you, I got to go down the hill so I can get an estimate. Uh, on my, uh, yeah, there was a truck coming the other, I was going to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park and a truck coming the other way. All of a sudden I see a, looks like a loaf of bread, but it turned out to be a flying log. Oh. And the trailer was carrying a whole bunch of uh, firewood or lumber in the back. And he went around the corner and here comes a flying log. And I swerved into bash in my window, uh, got the back of my door. And that's like, I don't know how, didn't miss, it could have killed me. Uh, oh. My interior is covered in glass. Um, it's yeah. I, and it's like, I was shaking. Uh, I mm -hmm. drove back and I caught the people and they were apologetic, had no idea what happened, but I got insurance and everything is going to take care of it. Um, and it's like, and as I was, uh, what is it? Show, I forget what I was doing, but the, there was a witness who stopped as well and said, look at you, you're activated. It's like, my hand was, uh, yeah. It's like, it was, yeah, it was nuts. I can't even imagine. I saw the pictures and it was like the, the side window, right? My little... No, my little wing window. Wing window. The, my arm. Yeah, the little wing window. There's a, a hole out of it, um, yeah. but the, that's okay. And then the B pillar got looks like Babe Ruth took a baseball bat, and there's a big dent in the B pillar. So I have to go get an estimate done, um, and see about well, that. So yeah. Yeah, and I think, oh, just a few inches over, and it could have come through the windshield. <laughs> I mean, that's terrifying. Oh my god. It's yeah, either the windshield, my head. I, it because oh, and god. I had there's the tinting on my windows there's bits of glass embedded in it i just noticed this morning i had glass on the inside of my sunglasses i had glass down my shirt uh, there was glass everywhere in the car it's uh wow yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it's always an adventure in the 55 right there's usually with old cars we have some sort of emotional attachment or something what what made you choose this car? How did you find it? How did it find you? <laughs> I used to have a Corvette, a 69 Corvette convertible. Uh, and 
I had it for over 20 years and it had, it served me well. And it didn't carry a mountain bike, a water ski, skateboards. Didn't it, I didn't carry any of my stuff, but it was a cool little car. And I thought about selling it. And then when my brother heard I was selling, he's like, I, I don't want it to come between us, but I, I want it. It's like, it's a car. It's not coming, but it's yours. So it's in the family. And uh, I had, I had had a, uh, um, a 68 and Paula station wagon uh, at one point as well, but it was a rust bucket. So I like station wagons. Uh, I had initially thought I had a blazer too, but I got rid of that. Um, so I wanted another hot rod. And I wanted a Nomad initially. I, I thought that all station wagons and the, all the Tri-5, 55, 66, and 57, I thought all of them were, if it's a station wagon, I thought it was a Nomad. Uh, right. But it's not. There's there's distinct differences between Nomads and the 150s and 210s. So, so what, is that? Uh, what is the main difference? Uh, well, if you, the, you know what the B pillar, can I get the, all right, can you see that? Yeah, uh-huh. That's a that's a B pillar. So uh, my car is a straight B pillar. Nomads have a slanted B pillar. My rear window rolls down. Nomads slide back on the roof. A nomad has, I think it's nine ribs on the roof into the metal. And then on the tailgate, uh, my tailgate is smooth. On a nomad, it has, I think it's seven chrome strips down on their tailgate. And then in order to open up my tailgate, I have a, a T handle. So like that on a Nomad, it's a, it's a push button and it's called a knuckle buster because you can't put your fingers through uh, beyond your knuckle through it. Or if you do, you rip your knuckles off. Oh, so yeah. there's, a, but everyone thinks it's a Nomad. Yeah. It's not, it is what it is. It's a 210. 210. Well, it's cool. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Done a great job with it. I'm sure you love driving it. Well, I was going to ask you, do you always go by yourself? Do you just like get in it and take off? You travel with yeah, him. I used to have a dog. Uh, my my dog Cisco used to be my travel buddy. Uh, he went everywhere with me, and I, I had that I had a, a seventy two K five Blazer, and I put a four sixty eight in it with a, a Dana sixty front end fourteen bolt rear four wheel disc brakes. It was a monster. Mm -hmm. And if I took a girl out on a date, it's like, oh, your 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 seat has dog hair in it. It's like I have a dog. He's in the car more than you are. Once you, <laughs> if you want to hang out, you got to. Deal with some dog hair, honey. I mean, what, right, I'm gonna like, I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna have dog yeah. hair. But now, I'm, yeah, I'm single, so yeah, I travel around alone, and uh, yeah, it's good fun. Oh uh, no, I think that's great. I keep enjoying that. That's wonderful. Let's talk about your um your voiceover work because I know you do some of that, and uh, yeah. you did some uh, TV work too. I saw on your website. Yeah, yeah, I've been. In, yeah, I did a. Uh, I've, I've been on the History Channel. I hosted a couple of game shows for GSN. Uh, yeah, I worked on The Price is Right. I got a AAA commercial. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love it. Do you <laughs> like doing that work? Yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. I like hosting. It's like I'm not an actor. Uh, I'm a host. Yeah. And I've had a lot of people confirm, oh, that's the same thing. No, it's not. I'm not acting like anybody. I'm me. Yeah. And it's like, it's at the good, there's no script. And my grandfather always said uh, you should be a taxi driver you're a good bullshit artist like, <laughs> okay it's like I, people ask what do i do with the good guys i need it on the microphone for the autocross so i tell people what's going on tell them about their cars i know a little bit about cars it's like on the hot rod power tour i'm the idiot up on stage with the microphone so yeah. it's uh yeah if it makes noise or has exhaust i like it i love it i love it i think that's a quote on your website too isn't it yeah, it is yeah <laughs> No, that's great. What, um, so what are some current projects you're doing? Anything fun in the voice world or TV world? No, I, I just, uh, I, I get auditions on, by email a bunch of times a day, pick out the ones that I, that I want to audition for. And then I've got a little studio in the back, oh, wow. uh, microphone plugs into it's a, it. Got my MacBook. I got the little microphone, plug it into GarageBand. It's a super easy little setup. Um, I've had a, a demo done for years and yeah, just get my auditions and, and do that. I've done some from, for good guys uh, for K&N. So it's like, if I know companies that are looking for it, I'll send them my demo or, or, or let them know, uh, especially companies that I, uh, that I know and, and, and use on, on the 55. So, yeah. I love it. That's great. Well, what, let's talk a little bit about your website and ways that people can kind of connect, check out your 55, and then also connect and purchase your book because it is really a beautiful book. Oh, thanks so much. It's, yeah, it's 
I drive a 55.com. That's it. I drive a 55.com. The first edition of this is sold out. This is the first time I'd ever done one, which is it's 111 pages. It's, it's a nice coffee table book. People that got them said they like them. I think I'm, I think it came out all right. I'm proud of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad you agreed to come on and chat with me about good guys and cars and your voiceover work. It has been fun and informative. Love, love, love it. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much for having me on, Cassie. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And next well, time you come, yeah, come out to the good guys in, uh, in November and say hi, stop by the, uh, uh, get the wristband, sign the waiver and uh, stop back in the booth and say hi. I will. Absolutely. Yes, that will be fun. Okay. Yeah, and if everything is uh, is back to n- uh, normal or whatever, right. we'll get you a ride with Robbie. <gasps> that would be fantastic. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, on that note, that's a great note to close up on. Thank you again for coming on. I really do appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I'll see you next time. All right. And to everybody out there, thanks for tuning in, listening, watching. Stay safe. And I will see you next week.